Hey everybody, Scott Tatweiler here. No, I'm not dead. <laughs> Sorry, the channel took a bit of a break there. Uh, so many of you know, I took a job with stability. So I've been uh, doing the quality assurance thing uh, since November and kind of went a little AWOL on making videos. So I plan to get right back on that soon. Uh, so we're gonna start with this one today. What we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of explore a bit of prompt craft or prompt engineering. So working with the prompts that are available in Automatic 11.11 and some things that I think we have been kind of remiss and zoomed over because we see all these really great new things coming out and we kind of forgot about some of the basics. So not so much that they're basics, but they're things I think you skipped that you might find really interesting. So the one today is gonna to talk about uh, switching between different prompts as we inference. And then I have two more advanced videos I'm gonna be coming out uh, with very quickly. Now, next week, I'm actually gonna be in North Carolina speaking there. Uh, so I'll be gone for another week, but I'll be back. Uh, so you won't see too much of a gap now with the video. So we're going to get the show right back on. Plus, I'm thinking about doing a podcast on the show. There's a lot of information that I receive uh, that's uh, good for reading, but I don't want to do a video where I'm just like talking to the camera. I think it'd make a better podcast. So uh, there's not a lot to show in some of this. It's more like AI news that I'm privy to that I kind of want to pass on. Uh, so let me know what you think in the comments below. So let's get started. Okay, so I have this fixation with uh, airships and the whole steampunk thing. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is we're going to use this as an example. Uh, so I have a very basic prompt here. Uh, and note that I'm mixing artists. I'm not a person who likes to choose one artist because I do feel that that is stepping on their toes. In this case, you can say that I'm inspired by both of these artists and I've kind of created my own style. Uh, and by the way, they're not photographers. So this actually is its own thing. Uh, and so this is a unique creation. And I kind of like this one as an example. So we're going to start with it. Uh, so we're going to start with a very simple thing and we're going to complicate it pretty quickly. So, so bear with me. So what I want to do is I want to take an airship and I kind of want to mix it with a train. And by the way, this works with all models. Uh, so what we can do is we can put braces around the word airship. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to put a pipe character that is above the inner key in your keyboard, the vertical line. I'm going to put what I want to turn it into. So I'll say a train. Now I want to put a close brace on there. So I have an airship and a train. What this is going to do is choose one or the other each time it does a step. So what we're going to do is we're going to get 20 airships interspliced with 20 trains. So if we do this, we'll end up with a airship train thing. And that's pretty much what we get. Uh, so this allows you to kind of take something and add to it. Now, what if we wanted more airship than train? What you could do, and this is not the way we're going to do it, but I'll give you an example. You can do airship, 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 train. So it's going to do three airships and then a train, and this will work, uh, but there's a much better way to do it. And that is to use the from and to method. So we do see here, we do an airship, we do a colon, we would do a train, and then we would put the either the step number when we wanted it to switch to the train or the percentage. So let's say we want to do airship for just 10 steps, and then the remaining 30 steps we want to do with the train. And you notice that it started out similar and then it got pretty twisted <laughs> immediately afterwards. Now, another thing we can do with this, which is pretty neat, is if we remove the second part of this and we leave the two colons, what this means is it's going to take the airship and replace it with nothing after a certain number of steps. So basically it's going to remove airship from the prompt after only 10 steps. This might be handy if you're doing like a dramatic sky or something like that. So you see we have our airship and then it's going to obviously continue working with what it was given, uh, but it's no longer going to use the word airship as part of the prompt. So it removes that word after this number of steps. Now we can also do it the other way by adding just one colon. This means it's going to add the word airship to the prompt. For well, the first part of this, there is nothing there. It's going to do whatever it's going to do. And then it's going to attempt to add the airship in near the end of the prompt. And obviously we're getting something that's not a lot of airship, but a whole lot of something else. So let's go back and knock this number back a bit, say to 10. So after 10 steps, it will then add in the airship. This is probably more realistic as to how you would do this. So the first part's that building again, and then it adds in the word airship and takes whatever we're doing. So we have our building now turned into an airship after 10 steps. So this before and after capability or this switching capability is built in to automatic 1111, and you can use this in all the different models. Okay, we're gonna do one more. You see here I have a diesel punk race car, ice, clouds, highly detailed, muted colors, winter cinematic, dramatic lighting, 8K, and then a photograph by Dennis Lofton. Well, I'm gonna do two is actually zoom my 
monitor up a bit so you can see this because I was doing some super um, superimposing of words earlier. I think it's just easier for you to see it in place. So let's do this with the uh, decimal method here. So we have a race car. So we don't want a race car all the time. We want to take our race car and we want to combine it with something. So let's say we want to combine it with, let's use the pirate ship again. Okay, and now we're going to use the decimal. So in this case, if we do you know, 0 0.5, would be the same as putting a 20 here because it's half of 40, right? So if we do half pirate ship, half race car, that's what this will do. And you could see it as it was drawing there that it was the race car first and then it became the pirate ship. So this is a really nice way to kind of hone in what you're looking for. So this is a 0 0.2, which is the same thing as 10 percent as 10 of these, so it's a 20%. So you could do it either way you'd like, with the decimal or with the steps. Steps is probably easier to look at. But in this case, what it is doing is using the pirate ship 20% of the way in, it is adding in the pirate ship. Instead of 80% of the way in, which would be a lot more race car, it'd be the other direction. This will add in 20% pirate ship instead of the other way around. There we go. That's pretty interesting. So it's combining those things together and you could do whatever you'd like here, spaceships, you know, what have you. But remember, it's how many steps in before it's going to switch to using the second prompt. So the lower this number, the sooner it's going to switch to the second part of the prompt. So again, 50-50, uh, if you're using 50-50, you want to mix, that would be half of this. So that's easy to think. If you want more pirate ship, this number would be lower. So it switches to pirate ship sooner. And if you want more race car, then you would switch it to be higher. So this kicks in with only the remaining 10 steps left. It should be noted as well that these can be quite lengthy. You don't have to just put race car. You can put race car on fire in the sky. I mean, you can really add anything you'd like to add in here. If you want a background, for example, that's special, you can do that and then have it go away after a certain number of counts. Like we talked about before, you can use the double colon, which is basically replacing it with nothing after a certain count. Let's say, for example, you wanted there to be a race car on fire and then a lot of smoke. The so punk race car this way on fire or smoke. So we could say that we want it to be 50 50 mix. This. And there we go. So we can mix the amount of smoke and fire that we wanted to, depending on how we put these numbers. Remember, this will last until the 30th frame of 40 or the 30th step of 40, and then the smoke will kick in. So that's why we got a lot more fire than we do smoke. So our ability to adjust the scene is pretty amazing. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. As I say, we're going to get everything right back going. Let me know what you thought of today and if you thought this was useful, because I think a lot of these tips and tricks kind of get skipped over by the fact that, again, this flood of information is coming out so fast. It's like drinking from a fire hose. We want to try and get back to the basics so we can make fantastic work and move forward and kind of, let's say, master all the tools we've been given instead of just kind of handling all of them briefly and then moving on to the next. There's a lot of great things that have stuck around and withstood the test of time, and that's what we kind of explore. So, everybody, uh, hope to see you again soon. Everybody, take care, and I'll see you next time.